Good morning, folks. Once again, today nobody could fault you for thinking the sun is quiet if you just looked at the earth-facing disk. Even the thin, dark filaments are stable. But as you'll remember, we've got incoming sunspots on the north and the south, and we've been seeing solar flares at the limb as they crest. In addition to the flares, we've seen filaments rip away, like this one last night. Some of the ejecta was recaptured, as you can see. Coming over to spaceweathernews.com, we find the Earth-facing quiet winds another round. Three different M-flare-making sunspots have all gone silent upon seeing our blue sphere. Let's go ahead and check out the spots. The largest lead ones appear to retain magnetic mixing at the north end, despite their quiet. The incomer up north looks to have a delta-class magnetism in the back, despite its quiet. And check out the decay and spread in that southern group that popped an M-flare just two days ago. Yesterday, we pointed out the coronal hole stream impact in the solar wind. Density drops off, speed rises in yellow. Although it's not a major stream, it was enough to tweak Earth's weakening magnetic system, surge particles into the auroral electrojet, and lit up the skies at high latitude, especially over western Canada and the United States. That's the top induction potential zone. A minor geomagnetic storm cropped up, and its low level is the only thing keeping me from definitively saying that the SoCal power plant explosion at the exact peak of the storm yesterday, remember 7 a.m. in Cali is the middle of the day UTC, in the exact place we've seen issues this year already, is space weather driven. Again, my only reservation is that they say it was only a level 1 geomagnetic storm. Well, folks, our top quake of the last day is another near six-pointer, moderate only for that part of the world. But last night over at QuakeWatch.net, I elevated the watch level to high for the first time in weeks. This is due to a number of factors like the planets conjoining for resonance amplification, the primary factor, equatorial coronal hull, even though it's not terribly powerful, and we do not expect further geomagnetic activity today. The tropical disruptions are waning over the Philippines, heading north east of Japan, or just running a solo trek through the central Pacific. If the storms stay on a weakening track, we should see the lithospheric disruptions within 36 hours. Allow me a moment to thank our volunteers, speakers, and everyone who attended the Observing the Frontier conference this weekend. It was a ton of fun. The speakers even blew my mind, which I didn't think was possible anymore. 20 states were represented, along with observers from Canada, Costa Rica, and Thailand. Wow. I learned so much this weekend, I need to delay our book release to make a few updates. It was supposed to come out yesterday, but when new information is presented, you got to do the right thing. So I appreciate a few days' patience and your forgiveness for it. Top article of the day is about the North Atlantic blob. It looks like the killer polar vortex events are going to hit Europe the hardest this year. Solid read. And so let's jump to the weather there and peek in. Find that same low and storm system in the southwest. High pressure. Clearing clouds in the eastern United States, driving the temperature swing, but also aiding in severe hailstorms coming to the desert southwest. Coming down under, you see the Antarctic lows trying to creep up to south central Australia, and that is indeed where the storm activity makes it up to land here. You've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 5.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.